welcome again to the group exhibit for hydrogen fuel cells and batteries at the Hanover Fair 2016. Thank you all for joining us. I hope that you can join us, have a seat. There are complimentary beverages uh, and table service, so please enjoy. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair. I'll be the moderator for this next discussion. Uh, joining me today, uh, we have uh, Bjorn Siemensen, who is the Director of Marketing, uh, Market Development and Public Relations for NEL. Uh, please join me in welcoming Bjorn to the stage. Well. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Bjorn. Uh, if you don't mind starting with a brief introduction about Nell. Absolutely. Um, does the sound work? I can do that. And um, here, why don't you speak into this? Yeah. Is it sound? I think it's on. Yeah. It it works on. Okay. Uh, absolutely, uh, and uh, the the title of, of uh, this talk is uh, kind of uh, boring, so I excuse that. Uh, and uh, there has actually been quite a few developments within our uh, company of late. And Nell is uh, as a publicly listed company on the Oslo uh, Stock Exchange in in Norway, and it's based on on uh, on uh, Nell Hydrogen, which is uh, an electrolyzer company. And uh, last, uh, last summer, H2 Logic, the refueling station company, where Jakob Krogskor held a presentation there yesterday, became part of the Nell Group. So now we are a, a, a complete uh, system provider, providing both uh, refueling stations and uh, electrolyzers. And we're also establishing a systems division now to address uh, renewable energy storage uh, combined with, uh, with hydrogen solutions. Okay, so currently you are providing hydrogen production technology and fueling stations, uh, and uh, and so you do have expansion plans. This is right. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we we are already a, a global company. We've delivered electrolyzers to to uh, nearly 60 different comp uh, countries all around the world, and refueling stations to to uh, to 10 uh, nearly 10 countries, and 34% uh, of all the 700 bar stations in Europe are delivered by, by uh, H2Logic in Nell. Okay, very good. What uh, electrolyzer technology uh, do you prefer and, and why? Well, uh, unlike uh, many other companies, we, we are working with uh, Alkaline. Uh, that is a technology that has been developed uh, through actually 90 years. Uh, Nell has a heritage back to, to Norsk Hydro, which developed this technology for, for large-scale ammonia production. So this technology has been refined throughout the years and is currently the most uh, cost-efficient technology for large-scale hydrogen production. And uh, we also see that this technology can work very well connected to renewable energy power-to-gas systems uh, coupled with other energy storage technologies like batteries or flywheels. So are your, uh, is, are your fueling stations typically uh, directly located with uh, the renewable energy sources, or how does it typically work? Um, uh, <clears throat> our refueling stations, well, the phase up until now, refueling stations have been uh, mostly demonstration projects, uh, and, and not that many, there hasn't been a, a strong commercial push on the refueling station side. But now we see there are more retail companies engaging within the refueling station business. We actually just uh, recently formed a joint venture with uh, the, the leading refueling station company in Norway. And they, of course, put the refueling station at the best locations where the customers are. And, and uh, in many cases, on those locations, th there is very limited space and the uh, price of electricity might be high. So uh, I, I think we are gradually moving away from, from on-site production uh, and to more centralized, uh, large-scale production. So for, for our station network that we are going to build in Norway now, I would assume that we would have on-site production at maybe a third of the, of the station and then trucked in from, from centralized production on the other. Okay. So uh, in, the, in the last uh, talk that we saw, there was some comments on the comparison of batteries to hydrogen technology. Um, you know, to make, uh, to further discuss that comparison, we typically talk about, uh, you know, storage, large-scale storage in, in dollars per megawatt hour. How does a hydrogen storage, you know, compare to other large-scale battery, uh, sorry, energy storage technologies on, on that basis? Mm -hmm. Well, you could, uh, if we take one example, let's say you want to store 
10 megawatt uh, throughout 12 hours. So that's um, 120 uh, megawatt hours of, of energy, which is quite a substantial amount, but this is uh, a realistic uh, size if you, if you take a look at a plant. So, so the guy that owns this solar plant, what should he invest in? Um, if he went for, for a hydrogen uh, production facility with compression, so he can accommodate for, for a trucked out hydrogen to, to refueling stations, that would cost on the order of around $8 million for a 10 megawatt system, if you go for, for a, uh, the alkaline technology at least. Um, and to, to uh, <clears throat> store the same amount of energy in a battery pack, with today's prices, it would cost about $50 million. And uh, best case, uh, or let's say $100 per, per kilowatt hour in the future, would be around uh, $12 million. So that's that part of the, the equation. The other part is, of course, what does the, the, the energy company earn from, from having either hydrogen or delivering just electrons back to the grid? That, of course, highly depends on the electricity price. But if we assume that the, the, the guy who owns this plant earns about $4 per kilo uh, for whatever hydrogen is trucked out, it could amount to about uh, 7 million, in the order of 5 to $7 million per year, which would be about three times the, the revenue that would uh, come from just providing electricity. So there is both a, a motivation on, on the on the CAPEX side and also the OPEX. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't install batteries uh, or uh, that, that there's a winner uh, necessarily. And we are looking at systems where we combine those technology to provide the optimum solution. Okay. And where are we on, uh, on, the, on a cost curve as far as the technology goes for, for creating and storing hydrogen? Like, is there further cost reduction expected as technology improves, or have we already plateaued the technology? There's definitely further cost reduction uh, potential on, on the CapEx side. Uh, it's already, uh, we would say, pretty good, <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, once you get the utilization up, you will get your uh, return on investment within, within a, a few years. So in a sense, where we are now, at least with alkaline technology, it is, it is quite cost competitive, and it will continue to go down through, through new developments, technology developments that we do, uh, that the, the whole industry is doing. And then it will also be very interesting to follow the PEM development and see how, how far down and how quickly uh, the prices of PEM uh, technology will, will, will fall. Uh, my next question to you is, um, is when will I have an electrolyzer in my house? <laughs> well, we, we, we get that question a, a lot from, from uh, eager, eager uh, in investors and, and, and people giving us uh, interesting tips. Um, so Honda already had their, their home refueler. So it, in a sense, it exists today. And I don't know how much it costs, but, but I'm guessing a, a lot. Uh, we are one of our new developments within electrolysis. It's called Rotalyzer. So it's a spinning uh, electrolyzer. The cell stack is rotating, and that is uh, has a size of a uh, one hundredth. So it's hundred times smaller than our current cell stack for for alkaline. That could potentially uh, be such a solution. If it will be in a home, I don't know. It will surely be in, in uh, industry players uh, connected to hydrogen refueling stations and maybe also large-scale uh, renewable. Who knows? And it might be in, in, in someone's house also in the future. Sure. What uh, technical reason is it for the cells to be spinning, for the cell stack to be spinning? Well, the, the reason is that the spinning effect gives, uh, gives a very, very efficient separation of the gas from, uh, from the water and, and lye. Uh, and uh, because of this efficient separation, you can also uh, reduce the, the distance between the electrodes to, uh, to a, a fraction of what it is today. So, so you get some really, really good benefits from, from spinning the, the, the cell stack. Of course, the spinning motion is, is a little bit of a challenge also, but we, we, have, uh, we have managed to, to make a, a prototype. We're on the generation five now. So we, we are on track with our development there. So it's in a sense an electrolyzer which has the best, best of both alkaline and PEM technology. Uh, quite generally, 
um, as far as the hydrogen infrastructure goes of the future, does does hydrogen pose any um, does the sorry the production, the storage, or the transportation um, pose any greater risk to public safety uh, than fossil fuels do? Well, you, you, you will get a lot of different answers uh, to to that one. Uh, it it will not pose a greater risk to to society or, or health. I would say it's it's a fuel with completely different properties from uh, from uh, the conventional fuels we're used to today, and also compared to other uh, gaseous fuels like LPG, for example, which is a heavy gas that uh, can can uh, gather up on the ground in parking houses, etc. Hydrogen is a light gas, so obviously you have to be 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 conscious of of the properties of the gas. Uh, but I, I don't think it will provide any greater risk to to society and health. Uh, maybe even a lower risk, actually. Um, great. Uh, are there any audience questions uh, for Bjorn? Looks like none at this time. Um, my last question, uh, also, uh, I think, you know, was mentioned uh, in the in the last talk, but pertained to the comparison of, you know, really fundamentally, you're in a technology of providing fuel for vehicles. It seems mm -hmm. at this point, and I guess I'd like to hear your also your commentary on on how the future will unfold with, you know, the, com the competition of electric vehicles, uh, given what it is. Obviously, some companies are posting some impressive numbers, obviously looking at Tesla uh, in terms of both charge times and their range. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, you know where, uh, where do you see them on their technology curve in terms of cost and performance, and, and, and how would you compare that and contrast that to the hydrogen uh, solution? Well, the, the, the battery uh, electric vehicles, they, they surely have a head start with about around 700,000 vehicles manufactured. Maybe it's 500,000 on the road today. Uh, and coming from Norway, Norway is like heaven for, for battery electric vehicles. We, we have a sales share of about 20% now, battery electric vehicles. Uh, but what's interesting to see is that the sales of these uh, battery electric vehicles is stabilizing actually went down a little bit in the first quarter. So 80% are choosing a different vehicle, even though we have all the subsidies you can dream of for, for battery electric vehicles. Now, these subsidies, they are the same for, for hydrogen uh, vehicles as well. But with the head start there, it remains to be seen how, how efficient, how, how fast that introduction will go. But we believe with what we're doing now jointly with UNOX, this retail company, uh, will really enable uh, the hydrogen cars to, to, uh, to really spread efficiently across the country. So we are going to build about 20 stations uh, before 2020, covering all of the southern part of, uh, of Norway. And uh, also, in conjunction with that, we are also scaling up our, our uh, hydrogen uh, station manufacturing capabilities uh, in Denmark. We just recently acquired a, a factory to produce uh, 300 stations per year. Uh, so, so we are definitely getting ready for this uh, for this market, and and we and of course, it all comes down to cost. Uh, it doesn't come down to efficiency. Efficiency is important, but the most important thing is what does whatever you buy give you, and what does it cost? So, so I think uh, we've seen uh, good developments on battery technology. We, it will still continue to go down. I think we will probably hit the, the $100 per, per kilowatt hour target. I guess it's around 350 today. And I think we will definitely reach the cost targets for, for hydrogen cars as well. Fuel cells will become very cheap. Uh, the tanks on the hydrogen cars, they will also become cheap. It's, it's carbon. So, so we have full control of the materials used in the manufacturing of these cars, and, uh, and they will be on the range of a hybrid car today. So I think uh, that they will probably be the cheaper, the cheaper car. Okay. That's a bold prediction. Very good. I like it. Uh, if there are no further questions, I, I think that uh, we'll probably wrap up. Um, so for more information, um, I welcome everyone to speak to Bjorn and Nell at booth B60. Um, they'll be there, of course, uh, waiting your questions. So don't go anywhere. Of course, we have another uh, discussion coming up. Uh, the next discussion is entitled Rapid Response Electrolysis for Grid Balancing, and that's with Dr. Simone Bourne. Uh, he is the CTO from ITM Power. 
So uh, thank you, uh, Bjorn, and if you could all join me in, in thanking Bjorn together. Thank you. Cheers.